If you love me, let me sleep. What does that mean? Is it me or I don't get it? I don't understand this. There you go. Love. I can understand that one. We used to be fun. You used to care. Darling, we built a home. A life. The now full of that is gone. I fear. My tears. I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a good, safe week. And you know what? A week from today is going to be my birthday. I'm going to be 67 years old. So, you know, around my birthday, I always do kind of an offbeat video. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're always doing offbeat videos. But I got a letter from a beautiful young girl who is petrified of getting older. And I wanted to make sure that I went through today some of the things that I not only wanted to tell her, but I wanted to go through all the things that I never was told about what it's like to really be 65 or older in the United States. Or maybe anywhere. So... I think this is going to be a video that is truly going to be worthwhile. I think there are some things that I want to talk about that you're not going to agree with. And I think some of the things that I talk about, I so hope you can relate to them. But one way or another, I think we're going to spark a really good conversation about things that we were never told about what it's really like to be a mature woman. Growing up, nobody ever told me that when I got to be 65 or older that I would still be the woman I always was. You know, passionate, vibrant, caring about life, caring about my appearance, liking lingerie, and yeah, looking at men. When I was growing up, I watched like the Andy Griffith show. I saw Hey, Aunt B, right? Then there was Hazel, the maid. All these women that were 60 or older, look how they were portrayed. <laughs> Granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. And as a young girl, I would watch Betty Davis in these amazing romantic movies. And then when I was 10 years old, she came out with a movie, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. It terrified me. You know, to this day, I'm afraid of that movie. <laughs> That movie has made me afraid of eyeliner. I went through my whole life thinking, I better hurry up and live because as soon as I hit 60, it's over. And that's not true. The woman, that rich, full, passionate woman that I was, I still am. And as much as I loved Aunt B, yeah, I, I, I'm not into canning pickles, not yet. I remember when I was a young girl, I always did 100 or 200 sit-ups a day. I cared about my waist. I loved my little waist, and I was always putting on little belts and buying little outfits that would accentuate my waist. I think I watched Gone with the Wind one too many times. You know, Scarlett O'Hare is the... Okay, you get the drift. Anyway... I remember like I would go to the grocery store or the mall or whatever and I would see older women with what I 
thought were like tiny little chicken legs and then a barrel around the middle of their body. So I thought, okay, again, boy, I better make hay while I'm young because that's going to be me. And lo and behold, I honestly didn't think there was anything you could do about all your weight going to the middle of your body. Well, that really wasn't too much of an issue for me until I hit right around 64. And I looked in the mirror and I went, excuse me, uh, my waist, where did my waist go? And I realized, oh wow, all right, the fight is on. There are so many things working against us when it comes to that fat in our body that just wants to hug our waist. What the, what is that? I don't want to let go of the middle of my body. <laughs> for one thing, it's not good for my heart. And it will dictate what type of clothes I wear. I don't want that. I don't want to be in moo-moos the rest of my life, you know, not being able to wear a belt because you got no waist. So the, be the belt's just going everywhere, right? I want to have variety. I want to be 75 years old and put on a pair of, you know, trousers with a, a, a beautiful belt, tuck my blouse in and look fabulous at 75. There is no reason at all that we have to lose our waist and it's never too late to start getting in shape. Walking for me is the very best and fastest way for me to have my waist come back. I was never warned how devastating menopause can be. It affected my sleep, my anxiety levels, I had strange weight gain, and when I would try to talk to my doctor about it, it was almost like he laughed in my face. So I would tell anyone, be prepared, be proactive, and you will get through it. And the only thing that truly got me through menopause is saying to myself, this will pass. This will pass. I always thought as we aged, we got a little bit slower and not as sharp. But what I started reading about is called crystallized intelligence. In other words, there's something that happens in our brains as we age, that our intelligence becomes so enhanced, it becomes crystallized by not only things like experience and IQ, but every single thing that we have learned in our life becomes crystallized. And it becomes something that we put into action and we can recall it. So we are probably, if we're the oldest one in the room, we probably are the first one with a solution to a problem. Living in the country that I live in, the United States, it seems that youth is definitely worshiped. Everything is geared towards 30 or under. So we don't really have that built-in respect for our elders as some other uh, countries have. But I do think that that is changing a little bit and I'm really happy to see that. Have you ever been in a situation and thought of a solution to a problem you've had for maybe 20 years and you think to yourself, why didn't I figure that out before? There is something so sexy and so intoxicating about a woman who knows who she is. She's comfortable in her own skin. And I have a friend here on YouTube and she has told this story before, but her mother never took care of uh, her skin. So her mother's skin was very wrinkled and very leathery. Uh, so she wasn't what, you know, people would say, uh, you know, what, the perfect 10, the hot babe. But she would always talk about seeing her mother at a party. And even though there were certainly more beautiful women in the room, all the men were around her mom. 
even though her mother was way past 50, but all of the men were flirting with her mom. They, they were laughing and joking and having a wonderful time with her mother who had a hundred wrinkles on her face. And that story has always stayed with me. When you're a woman and you're comfortable in your own skin, when you are proud of what you've accomplished, when, when you can share your intelligence and your wit and offer somebody else something truly special and unique, that's very attractive. And it's like magic. So this myth of, oh yeah, you have to be a perfect 10 to have a man look twice at you, it's not true. But more importantly, you don't have to be a perfect 10 to have fabulous self-esteem. And that is one of the biggest surprises of me getting older, is me being proud of who I am and how far I've come but also being super honest and being, being able to see and admit all the flaws that I have and listing all the things I need to work on. Yeah, but what an amazing journey this is. One thing that I was never told is that there will never come a time where I don't want to keep working. And there's something called the Longevity Project and they studied happiness levels in women over 60. And the women that reported the highest levels of happiness were women that kept working. Either they kept working in their chosen profession or they retired and started something completely new. And they got up every day and they painted or they volunteered or they started a company, or they wrote a book. I mean, I could go on and on. It was amazing that it seemed the secret to longevity was to keep working somehow, some way. No, we really don't want to put our feet up. We really don't want to sit around and eat bonbons and watch Netflix. Well, maybe we do once in a while. That feeling that we have something, some reason to get out of bed and give back to the world, to make a difference in life, that keeps us living. If you're a woman over 60, and men too, you're more apt to allow yourself to tear up or cry. You feel things very deeply. You have an acquired history of life and how precious it is. And you will tear up more when you're happy than when you're sad. And I find that to be very comforting when I read that because I do tear up a lot. And it's usually because of something that's so glorious and wonderful and I'm just flooded with emotion. Another reason they stated why we tear up so easily when we get older is that we no longer give a damn what other people think. That crying isn't a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. It's a sign that we know exactly who we are and we don't give a damn. If somebody thinks, well, that's not proper. She, she shouldn't be crying over that, that amazing painting. Who does that? She does. That's who does that. I do. I cry over a painting. I cry over a piece of music. I cry when I talk to you and tell you about so many things that happened to me in my life or my son's life, my grandchildren. And I don't, I don't give a damn what people think. 
I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that, that has made all the difference. If you're happy, you want to jump out of bed and live your life and, and be healthy and do everything you can to keep living a great life if you're happy. So it seems to me that that tells me that the most important thing I have to do is try to be happy. And that will give me a very long life. And I've always believed that women face two roads in their life right around this age that we're at right now. And one road is where we look back on our life and we're sad and we're bitter and we feel we didn't get the life that we deserved, the life we wanted. And that didn't happen because maybe somebody came into our life and, and took what was ours. And we can't forgive it. We can't let go of it. And, and we're unhappy. Or there's this other road where, where we look back on our life and, and we're happy. I mean, maybe things didn't always work out great, right? Maybe there, there were people in our life that truly did hurt us, that affected our life. But we're still grateful. We're grateful for this life that we have because every rotten person that showed up, every rotten thing that happened to us made us the woman we are today. And we like the woman we are today. And we like the life that we are building. So we have a choice in life. We have a choice whether we, we can feel powerless and bitter or we can feel grateful and empowered by our own strength, our own amazing journey. We can seize the day. That's all we have is this one day. And when we're happy, that's all that counts. One day to make a difference. I have trained myself that when those negative feelings happen, I push them away right away. Sometimes I don't always succeed, but I'm getting better and better at it. The best piece of music ever written, the most dramatic successful novel ever written, the best films ever directed, were all from people that were over 60. How about that? Buddy, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. I always do. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you get a chance below, could you tell me if you related to anything that I mentioned in the video about how we feel about our life and, and getting older? Please have yourself a wonderful, safe, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right. It's a deal. We'll be here. He is actually studying to become a doctor, and uh, he was doing a medical rotation in Austin.